Welcome to this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. On today's program, we're going to talk economic development. We're going to spend some time with Kevin Hughes, the director of the Suffolk Economic Development Department, to find out what he and his staff are doing to help make Suffolk the business community you want to be a part of. Stay tuned. Welcome back to On the Scene, joined now by Kevin Hughes, the Director of Economic Development here with the City of Suffolk. And Kevin, thanks for taking time with us today. Yeah, my pleasure. So we're gonna be doing sort of an overview of your department and as far as the role that you play with the City of Suffolk, helping businesses, both big and small, and just really developing the business community. Um, so we'll start with that, and I might have just told, answered my own question, but what would you say is the role of Economic Development Department here with the City of Suffolk? What are some of the things that you guys do? Yeah, so the department is, technically is a, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. And so the department includes three divisions, essentially. It includes the economic development department, which interacts with the business community and the commercial development primarily. It includes the tourism division. It also includes the Suffolk Executive Airport. Okay. So those are kind of the, that's what's covered under the umbrella of economic development. Right. I think your question's really related to economic development. Correct. So there's sure. a, a couple aspects to it. It's really interaction with our private investment community. The and it, it ends up being kind of an we like to call it offense and defense. Mm -hmm. And so from an offensive perspective, we're looking to encourage new business growth into the city. Mm -hmm. And so we're meeting with businesses uh, with some of our strategic partners all over the globe. Um, encouraging to, to check out Virginia, check out Hampton Roads, then uh, try to bring them into Suffolk. Uh, that also works with the development. And so we want to make sure that we have land prepared, right. we have buildings in place. So when we have those conversations, we can show them real estate that works for them. And so that's part of the deal as well. Sure. On the defensive side, mm -hmm. it's really about keeping our businesses happy, uh, growing, uh, and expanding in the city of Suffolk, and that goes from businesses small to large and, and everything in between. Got it. Uh, well, you mentioned the fact that you know there's the kind of the three areas as far as with economic development as a department, but with economic development, if you will, the division within the department, so to speak, who comprises your team? How is your team made up? Yeah, so uh, I'm one of five. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of working from the, the top down, it's myself as director. Sure. Uh, Greg Bird is assistant director. As assistant director, primary focus is that kind of offensive part. Mm -hmm. He also works on some of the detailed stuff. So, you know, we're members of uh, industrial parks in the area, and it involves property owners associations and things of that nature. And right. so Greg really gets into some of the weeds on that. Sure. Um, does some interaction with our economic development authority, who are the, the keepers of those properties. Mm -hmm. uh, then Dina Holt works on business retention, so she's the one-stop shop, hopefully that first phone call we get from our existing businesses. Right. Uh, Terry Smith keeps up with our real estate, uh, she helps with research as needed uh, and some marketing efforts. Mm -hmm. And then Mitzi Carr uh, is our um, associate of economic development and she's the main focus for our um, economic development authority, kind of upkeeping the financials of them, uh, assisting me with some, some uh, managerial type right. things, um, but that's the five of us. So a, a small group of people doing a lot of things. Yeah, really. we're, we're, we're very busy, um, <laughs> but try to be as efficient as we can. Understand, understand. Well, when you look at the Suffolk business community, how would you frame it, how would you break it down because it is definitely a mix of you know big industry you've got small businesses which of course the, these two entities work together to really drive economics here in the city uh, but talk about how it's comprised and how you see it kind of laid out the thing that I really appreciate the most of um, the business community in Suffolk is it's extremely diverse and I'm sure every city says that but it, but it really isn't Suffolk right um, but we have the ability, and we do because of the size of Suffolk, mm -hmm. to have a scope that's really interesting. And so as you mentioned, we've got some large businesses, major employers. Right. You know, you go from the extreme of, of Target, who mm -hmm. has almost uh, 1,000, 1,500 people today right. in a building that's 1.8 million square feet of space, right. uh, and then to smaller users like a Lockheed Martin in northern Suffolk who's doing war gaming and modeling and simulation in a state-of-the-art, just knock your socks off kind of facility, it's really hard to, to, to gather and understand all that stuff. And so the diversity that occurs, and then you come into downtown Suffolk where it's historical, uh, it's a little more mom and pop mm -hmm. or entrepreneur driven. Sure. And so the, the days that we have are extremely diverse um, and, and the city's really large, so you're, you're managing your time as well. Um, but you know, logistics is big, uh, food and beverage manufacturing is big for us. There's there's a component of advanced manufacturing. Uh, technology still has an opportunity here as well. And then we're beginning to see something interesting in the office and administrative. So groups like Town Bank have their headquarters here. Bon Secours has their administrative headquarters. VDOT just put their regional office up here. And so we're seeing that central location in Suffolk being a really good fit for folks that maybe do business all around the region. 
When it comes to kind of mapping out Suffolk, I mean, I think some people might think, well, you want to put this here and this here. I mean, some of it, and obviously there's some st strategicness to it with regard to liking industries and grouping like that to a certain degree, because you mentioned all the land. So we have a very blank canvas, which is becoming fuller and fuller by the day, so sure. to speak. But what is the philosophy by, are we trying to plan it in that sense? Or is it a sense of, we're going to really see who's interested in coming and figure out and work with them to figure out where they fit best. How does that kind of come together from your perspective? Yeah, so um, as, as a city, as a whole, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of coordination and collaboration. Right. And you'll hear a lot about the comprehensive plan. And so it really starts with that. Every five or so years, the planning department, working with the, the planning commission, city council, and the citizens begin to kind of uh, look at where our zoning sits and where the city's experiencing growth and where future needs are going to be. And that's a very far-reaching, long-range plan. Right. Within that, it begins to kind of set in place where we're going to do commercial development. Um, it also has some far-reaching ideas about things that we're seeing come to fruition today, like mixed-use developments. Right. Retail on the bottom, like you'd see in, say, the downtown area with residential above, we're now seeing that into the northern part of the city. Right. Um, and then also preserving some of those industrial areas that need large buildings that stretch over large uh, pieces of property. Right. And so the comp plan sets the tone for it, and then we work within the comp plan uh, to, to locate businesses or opportunities where maybe a developer wants to, to come in, spend some of their funding, uh, begin to create a revenue source for buildings, land, et cetera. How has it been, I mean, I've been here about 16 years, and I certainly have seen a lot of growth in that period of time. Obviously, people have been here a lot longer, more lifetimers, so to speak, or even people that are just, just showing up, it's really growing and developing. Has it been easier to sell Suffolk, so to speak, with all the growth that's happened so that people see what's taking place here and the specialness that we have? Yeah, I think it's definitely been recognized yeah. that we sell Suffolk as a, as a growth city. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's being recognized more and more for those in the Hampton Roads region. They, they see it as a, a great opportunity. And even with that, to a certain degree, if you haven't got in early to, or, or taken advantage of that, yes. it might be tough for you. Right. Um, not that we can't work with you and try to figure it out. Of course. But yeah, I think most folks embrace Suffolk and recognize that it's a growth city. Mm -hmm. It's one that I think the, the city uh, manages well and participates in. Um, but those that are looking for opportunity, Suffolk's now on a list and probably has been for that, you know, 16 years or so, right. where folks are giving it a look when maybe they wouldn't have previously. Got it. Got it. So I think it's it's great that I know it's a spe I say it's a special time to be here in this sense of that we always know it's a good time, but it's extra special now as far as with the things that we've seen. So looking at, as you mentioned, the entrepreneur situations, someone wants to start a business here in the city of Suffolk. What would you recommend one of the first steps be? Would it be to contact your department to kind of find out what information and resources you can provide to help them along the way? Yeah. Because, you know, y'all helped a lot of people. You, you, you understand how the thing works, how everything fits together. Uh, certainly looking at it from multiple city departments coming together to provide assistance or services or what they're going to need to do to operate here. What would you say is like a good first step for someone looking to, thinking about starting a business? Yeah, so every business that's in startup mode is in probably a different startup mode. Um, you know, how far are they in kind of daydreamer? Um, this is what I'd like to do. Have they put together a business plan? Do right. they Have they thought about financing? Have they secured a location. Um, you could be anywhere within that scope. Right. Um, swinging by our office uh, would be a great first stop. Mm -hmm. um, I can't guarantee you we'll have all the answers for you. Correct. But what we do have is the opportunity to connect you to others mm -hmm. and the resources. I've never seen a time in Hampton Roads where there's been more opportunity for assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing groups like Old Dominion University, uh, Paul DeCamp has some things, uh, the Small Business Development Center, a lot of different groups that have a lot of different resources, and some of them have funding right. to assist you getting there. It's right. going to depend on what your industry is sure. and where you're going and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we, we're going to do everything that we can to, to, to provide you some direction, Correct. Uh, connect you with the right people, or if we have a program mm -hmm. in, in our shop, then we're going to yes. see if we can make it work for you as well. You mentioned programs in your shop. Um, what are some of the education efforts that y'all have done? And I say education, we're not talking about school per se, but as much as having seminars and things that y'all try to bring together to, to, to uh, you know, grow the small business community, to give them some information. I mean, some of the efforts that you've done historically as well as also moving forward. Yeah, I think the foundation, especially if you haven't run a business, is to make sure that you've thought through it. Right. And a lot of it is going to be who you bring from a, from a perspective of, of a team, mm -hmm. um, accounting, finance, uh, marketing, things of that nature. And some of those things you're going to use other resources for. Uh, some of those things you're going to do in-house. But beginning to work on your game plan um, 
really is important. So those are the seminars that we've tried to, to bring to fruition, right. Right. whether it's a, a local bank or an accounting firm or something else maybe for procurement, what have you. Uh, those are the groups that we try to bring in. We've done them in large scale formats. We've had 30 some people. We've done them in small scale formats. We've, we've made them as part of requisites for grant money that we've done. Right. Um, those resources are always out there like through different partners. There's always the opportunity just to walk up to people as well. Um, nothing's better than getting a testimonial or what worked or what hasn't. Sure. Um, but those are things that we try to work on. There's a really great uh, source across from City Hall right now at the Suffolk Executive Offices. Um, Richard Chang and what he's done over there, you can secure an office for short-term space that you're not locked into. And he's got some good resources as well to connect you with some of those bankers or accountants or what have you. But we're always open to make those connections up in our economic development office as well. And certainly I know a lot of the focus is on businesses coming here, developing here, growing here, which means employers, but also you have to make sure that there's also the workforce to, to match that, to ma match the demand. So talk about some of the efforts as you do to make sure and coordinate with the businesses to make sure you know th they understand the dynamic of what the area brings and also making sure that maybe connecting some of the, I mean, you're not, a, you're not an employment agency, but also making sure that employment base is there to support those folks as well. Yeah, I, I can tell you over the last year or so, we've really tried to direct mm -hmm. uh, our efforts, especially in the, the world of workforce development. Yes. And a lot of that is aligning with key partners. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we'll hear the business community saying, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to find this person. Usually it's a lot of skill sets. Sure. Uh, mechanics are tough, welders are tough. And a lot of that's going to be foundational based. You know, are those trades, are those jobs being promoted? Uh, are the opportunities to get training being put in front of people's faces? It, it's really all about opportunity. Right. Um, and, and are people seizing those opportunities? Well, first of all, are opportunities being presented? Mm -hmm. Do they know it exists? Um, are they looking for it? And so that's where we've put a lot of time and emphasis. Right. And we've started a little bit with our, our, a couple of our large, big businesses that, that do employ a lot of people to start a foundation and, and create a partnership with the school system that we haven't done before. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of hand-holding, right. um, but necessary. Right. Um, and, and folks are looking for us to play that role, which is great, and so we're finding our niche in this. And so, for example, we've taken three employers, Target, QVC, and Cisco Foods. We've matched them and paired them with each high school that's closest to them, our three high schools. And then we've worked with the Suffolk Schools and the Career and Technical Education Program to handpick students that are um, looking for those opportunities for work uh, right. at an at a appropriate age, 17, 18, that are in their career and technical education, right. um, that they think are ideal candidates. And we're having the companies teach classes in the school system. And then uh, as they work in some of those, the work keys that the school system's trying to, to, to promote as well as the state of Virginia, we're then taking them in and showing them what an application looks like. And it can be a couple of different things. It's, sure. it's hopefully an opportunity for folks to say, wow, I never knew this was here. Mm -hmm. This is a great place to start. I don't have to finish here, but a great place to start. Maybe I can go to college um, on the side or right. online courses, sure. or maybe this is, this is great. This right. is my opportunity, or maybe I just need to check this out. Mm -hmm. There's also folks that can walk in there and say, this is not for me. <laughs> right. And to a certain degree, everybody's not wasting time sure. on that because sure. that can be troublesome. Yes. Um, so spending that time, making those connections and really opening the world of opportunity uh, for careers is what we're trying to do. We're also seeing some great uh, initiatives by some of our business communities, uh, specifically a group, All First, um, up in Northgate Commerce Park. They're an they're industrial contractor. They've gone on their own, and we really encourage employ, uh, employers to do this. Mm -hmm. if, if you have a, um, a need, we need you to be at the table right. and, and taking a leadership role here. And, and we can play a role and we will find you people and we'll figure this thing out, right. but you gotta be at the table, you right. gotta put time and effort. And what All First has done is created their own welding mentorship program certified. And they ended up working with Tidewater Community College uh, to, to find that assistance that, that I talked about. But taking that lead, uh, going through the school systems all over Hampton Roads and finding candidates to work for them, but also go through their program um, has been really, really awesome. Yeah. Um, it's it's one that I hope other employers can model themselves after. Sure. Um, but we're always looking for opportunity to 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 be creative mm -hmm. as well as looking for inspiration, and and they're a a, a real great role model right. in that. And I think definitely having an employer home growing talent yeah. is is key because you get to 
really cherry pick and make sure these folks are fitting with your company, definitely meeting the skill sets that you talked about, and I think that's very important. And I think another thing that's very important as far as from, from your department's perspective is knowing the community, knowing the players, like you said, making all the connections that you're talking about. So how does your staff build those relationships? Is it just simply you know, getting out on the streets, going to talk to business owners, no understanding what their needs are and connecting that up, as well as again working, as you said, with the greater Hampton Roads community to make sure you find where these partnership opportunities are that you can make those connections and just let the business scene fester and grow. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's about relationships. Mm -hmm. um, we have to build trust. Right. We have to um, be thought of as a true partner. Uh, we all, the, the line that I give all of our businesses and meetings is, I want to be on your speed dial. Yep. You got a problem, give me a call. We're going to do everything we can or find you the right resource that we can. And whether that's a pothole mm -hmm. or I need 300 people, right. uh, we're going to figure it out. We want to be on the team. And we mean that and we're sincere about it. I also have a, a great team that's been here for a long time, and right. so they've built their, their relationships, and I'd like to believe that folks recognize that when we say something, we're going to follow up and do it. Right. And if, if we can't do those things, then we can't be thought of as a resource. And so we take that to heart. As mm -hmm. We're very sincere about it. Um, building and maintaining those relationships sure. is, is, is key. Got it. Well, you mentioned uh, kind of off the top, uh, other part of your team is, is the Division of Tourism and also Suffolk Executive Airport. How do those two elements fit in economic development? Because people might think, well, I don't understand how, there is a reason and there's a methodology behind it, right? Yeah, so um, I, I give this a, a de decent amount of thought to see how they all can kind of work together. And it's, it's, not, a, it's not all uh, perfect all the time, <laughs> right. uh, but there are opportunities. Sure. And so for sure. example, we just did the Taste of Suffolk. Correct. Uh, tourism was helping us uh, make connections with the restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, Restaurant Week's another great opportunity Correct. to where there's some overlap here. Yes. Um, some of those relationships, there's some, some great uh, support and uh, skill sets that over in tourism, especially from a graphic perspective and a marketing perspective. Mm -hmm. And so getting the word out, overlap Overlapping our services when it's when it's important is is, is a really big deal for us. Sure. And so, you know, we had the storm coming up, right. and so folks were probably wondering, is this event going to happen, or were they thinking about other things? Correct. And so we were coordinating our social media efforts from a marketing perspective, both in tourism as well as economic development, yes. um, and complementing each other versus right. stepping on each other's toes on things of that nature. And so there's throughout the year there's probably a handful of opportunities where we're dabbling in each other's world and mm -hmm. providing assistance there. Sure. Um, the airport uh, is a little different animal, mm -hmm. um, but it, we, we've tried to change the mindset over there from uh, less of a maintenance mode and more of a selling mode. Got it. And so we are trying to, to make money down there. Uh, we are renting space mm -hmm. uh, in our hangars. We are selling fuel. Right. Uh, we're looking for new opportunities to, to, to build hangar space down there. And so there's a courting aspect. Mm -hmm. We have businesses down there, Skydive Suffolk. We now have a flight school down there. We've got a restaurant down there. And so having that mentality that it's really customer service driven, right. that we want you to thrive here in our space and I play a role in there, mm -hmm. has been something that the airport has, has really done well on. Right. And so that, that's been great. So I think some of it's the mindset. I mm -hmm. think sometimes Sometimes when, when you work for the local government, you kind of get in this uh, bureaucracy a little bit that, you know, the line's over there and come bring me your paperwork when you're done. Sure. We try to complete the paperwork for you Got it. Um, or with you right. in those three different organizations. Sure. And, and I think one thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that's also part of um, the economic development, again, you mentioned it earlier, was the EDA. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes may be confused where, where does the economic development part, but begin and end, and where does the EDA begin and end? So how do those two organizations fit together? And really, what is the EDA for those who might not understand what it is and what role it serves in our community as yeah, well? Yeah, sure. So the Economic Development Authority, the EDA, used to be known as the IDA, Industrial Development Authority. And what they are essentially uh, is, a, is a toolbox. Mm -hmm. uh, they can do things that say the city council or the city cannot do. Correct. And so they are they're uh, an agency within the city, but they're um, represented by eight members mm -hmm. uh, of Suffolk citizens right. appointed by city council, right. and they own property. Okay. And so the, the board, mm -hmm. eight of them, own property to encourage business investment Got or it. business expansion. So just like the department, their goal is more tax revenue for the city mm -hmm. to keep residents' uh, tax rates down and job opportunities. Right. And they do that by the land that they owned and encouraging development. They also do that by being the stewards of our incentive fund. It's a very competitive environment mm -hmm. these days and the, 
the the door was opened a while ago about trying to incentivize right. investment. And so right. we're we're part of that world. Mm -hmm. And the EDA is the steward of a fund. They negotiate agreements. They talk about if you invest this, we will provide you an, an offsetting uh, investment of this in, in a grant form. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of what they work on. Uh, we, we meet monthly. Mm -hmm. uh, I work as the executive secretary or deputy secretary treasurer uh, for that. But then we have a board that makes the decisions. And so staff in the economic development department, uh, we're all city staff, but we sure. provide support for them. Right. And uh, they go through their, their their inventory or different projects that we may be working. And we work in a coordinated effort along with city council to again drive tax revenue and, and job creation and so they can do some things that the city can't right um, by state code sure um, most cities do have an EDA of some sort correct and that's kind of how our works got it well we have a couple minutes left in the program and I'm gonna kind of put you on the spot here but if, if, if let's, let's just pretend I'm a prospective business looking at the city of Suffolk what's your sales pitch what are you gonna be coming at me with how are you gonna be framing it up and presenting what Suffolk is, assuming that I'm making widgets or something like that. So we, we'll kind of put that out of the way. But but what is your pitch? What is the sales pitch for Suffolk? I mean, what, what do we have to offer, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think the first and foremost, the, the two big selling points mm -hmm. really is location. Right. Um, so if you're doing business in Hampton Roads, we're strategically located. If sure. you're a large user and you're building widgets and you're sending them overseas right. or somewhere around the, the country, you've got the Port of Virginia in your backyard, mm -hmm. we're right in the mid-Atlantic, so you're right in the middle of the East Coast, and so um, from a logistics standpoint, you can get your product in and out. Right. Um, that always is helpful. As a growth community, that means you have more customers coming in, so your sales projections here could be different next year because more people are coming in. Right. Uh, or you could be building widgets and you need people. And right. so, where, well, good news is more people are moving here. Right. And so, from a labor force perspective, you have the opportunity to grab some of those people in here. And so, kind of that growth and, and the location really are the two big selling points. Mm -hmm. And if you're not growing, it, it's a struggle. Yeah. And if you're not in the right location, that's a struggle too. And so, if you have both of those things already checked, we're already ahead of the curve. Okay, well, I'm moving to Suffolk, so you, thanks for the sales pitch. I All appreciate right, one it. Down. Well, one down. There we go. Well, Kevin, I want to thank you for your time today to share again what was going on in the Economic Development Department, what's going on in the city of Suffolk as far as with business development, and again, great resources offered by Kevin and his staff that people can utilize to find out more about really if you're considering getting a business going, if you already have a business here looking to expand or you want to bring a business to the community, no matter what your perspective, economic development is here to help. Great staff people. And Kevin, I know you have a great website. We'll have that URL up there as well. But is there a contact, general contact number if someone just wanted to get in touch with your department, give you a chance? Yeah, so our main number is yes. 757-514-4040. Or all you have to do is go to uh, your phone right. or online, right. type in Yes Suffolk, yes. and you'll find us. Perfect. And again, that's what we want everybody doing, saying yes to Suffolk, correct? That's right. Well, Kevin, again, thanks for your time with us today. That would do it for this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. We'll see you next time.